Hey everyone, Matthew here from Red Flyer Coding, and today I'm going to bring you guys episode number two of my platformer game dev tutorial series. And these are going to be fairly short videos, so I'm going to try and cut down the intros and outros a little bit, but check out episode number one, link will be in the description down below to the playlist. But this is what we're going to be doing today, is creating our player. Um, we're not adding movement yet, that'll be in the next video, but it's going to be more than just drawing a rectangle, we are going to set up some things that'll make the next videos much easier. So here we are where we left off in our previous video and we're going to go back to VS Code right here and first we're going to do some kind of structural setup that's going to help us create the player and I actually mentioned this in the previous video but the first thing we need to do is actually move all of our JavaScript files into a folder. So I'm going to right click, right -click in our folder here and we're going to say new folder and we're going to call it JS and then we're going to move index.js into that JS folder and then we want to make sure we don't have any errors, so we're going to go in the source from where we linked our index.js folder, and we're actually going to add js slash right there, um, because if we just do index.js, it's not going to be able to find it, because again, this looks in the same exact directory, the same exact folder as the index.html file, and it's no longer in there. This is, this is a little bit of a confusing interface, but it's actually in the js folder, which is within this folder right here. So we just have to say js slash, so that way it knows to open the js folder, and then it'll find index.js in there. And we're actually going to add another script here, and we're going to say source is equal to js slash player.js. So we're going to save that, and that's actually all we'll be doing with our HTML today. We're not going to do anything with the CSS today, and we're going to create a new file within this js folder, and we're going to call it player. JS. And this is not at all necessary. You could just put all of your code within the index.js file the way that we're setting this up, but that just gets really out of hand really quickly. Um, and this helps kind of keep everything organized, in my opinion. Um, and this is the method that we're going to be using for the sake of the tutorial. We're going to have a different file for a bunch of objects that we're going to use in our game. So players and maybe borders and uh, you know if we have enemies or power-ups or coins or things like that those are all going to have their own JS files. So next what we're actually going to do is we're going to do some setup. Let me move over my OBS a bit here real quicker it's a bit too large. We're going to do some setup with some new game variables. Create game variables and we're actually going to make two variables. The first one will be game loop right there and the next one will be player. I feel like I need to sneeze. I don't think so. Now it's gone. I think we're good. Okay, game loop and player, just like that. And then after we assign the canvas and context variables, in the next video, we'll be setting up key listeners. List. Oh my gosh. Set up key listeners, but we're not going to do that in this video. But we, what we are going to do is we're going to create the player. So we're going to say player is equal to new player, and then we're going to give them an x and a y coordinate. Let's say 50 and 400 is what I used in our solution code right here. There's 50, 400. Uh, maybe we could go a little bit farther out, maybe like 100. 100, 400, how about that? But right now, this is actually, oh, there's a typo. That's supposed to be a capital P right there. But this isn't going to work because we haven't defined player yet. So what we actually have to do is within our player.js file, which think of it as just an extension of our index.js file, any code that goes in here could just go in the bottom of the index.js file again, but that would be, uh, it would get very long very quickly and it would be hard to keep track of. So that's why we're gonna keep it here, but we're gonna say function player with a capital P, x, y are gonna be the uh, parameters. And then we're gonna say this.x is equal to x, this dot y is equal to y, and you can see that this changed to green because um, because of the this dot x equals x. It, it's treating this as like a constructor now, um, much simpler than using like classes and all that in Java. Um, this is a fairly simple method that we're going to be using for this tutorial. So as you guys can see, player is equal to new player 100, 400, 100, and 400 are then going to become the x and y of the player, and we need to create some other variables. We're going to say this dot width is equal to 50. This is going to be in pixels, and it could be whatever you'd like, but we're going to do 50 and 100, at least for now. And then we're actually going to give the player some methods as well. So we're going to say this.step is equal to function, and we're going to say this.draw is equal to function. Um, make sure you don't just say this.step 
brackets like this. Um, we have to set it equal to function, just like that. And you can see when you type in function, it actually makes this yellow because uh, VS Code is recognizing the step is a function. And the way we call this is if we say player.step, it'll call this function right here. Um, so it's pretty, pretty handy how that works. Now we have our player created, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start the game loop. And if you've never made any games before, this might be a little bit confusing for you, or if you just followed the Sudoku tutorial, which was the previous one, we didn't really have a game loop there because we just updated the game every time we clicked something. But for our game, we're going to want a game loop that's actually going to run uh, fairly frequently. We're going to set an interval, and we're going to say step and 1000 divided by 30 is what we're going to start with right now. So what this means is it will call the step function that we're going to create right down here. Function step. This step function will be called 30 times per second because 1000, this is in milliseconds right here, 1000 milliseconds is one second. So we're saying one second divided by 30 is how long it's going to wait in between every time that this runs. So this will run 30 times per second. We can test that really quickly by just saying console.log step. And everything else looks good, I think. So why don't we go here, open up our console, and refresh the page. And you guys can see step is being printed 30 times per second. Looks good. So let's get rid of that console log. But this is creating our game loop. This will be running 30 times per second. And we'll use this for things like... Uh, moving the player because you may think okay well we'll just check for button presses if we press w the player jumps but then we have to move the player after that original jump we have to keep moving them because we don't want them to just jump and then teleport up here we want them to slowly move up and then slowly move down from gravity and it'll update 30 times per second that's uh if you play games it's like the frame rate um, which is what we're going to be using so after that let me scroll down really quick here okay um we're going to make the player step and within this, you might wonder, why don't we just call player.step in here? But we might want other things to step as well if we have other objects um, that'll be moving, like enemies or um, any like projectiles in the air or power-ups that might be moving around or something like that. So that's why we're going to have a main step function over here. And then we're going to call player.step within here. And then we're going to have another function, function draw. And this is where we're actually going to draw everything, because we can take the player and we can move its x-coordinate, but we're not actually going to see that on our screen until we draw a rectangle with the new position. And that'll make more sense in a second. Oh, whoops. I meant to set it up like that, function draw. There we are. And at the end of our step event, we're going to draw everything. So we can call... Oh, whoops. That's not what I meant to do. We want to put draw up here. Just like that. And it's going to call this draw function down here. Um, and we could also make like a function within here that's going to run 30 times per second. And it calls step and then it calls draw. But I found it simpler to just call draw once everything has been updated. Once its position has been moved with the step event. And then within draw, we're going to first clear the canvas. And for this, we're actually going to use our code that's up here. We're going to copy this. We'll get rid of this comment. This was the code we made in the previous video, but all it's doing is it's setting the fill style, and we're setting that like brush color to white. And then it's going to fill a rectangle from the top left to the bottom right corner. So it's going to make everything white. And I'll show you guys why we need that in a second. Um, but now, after we clear the canvas, we're going to draw the player. Let me scroll down really quick. Yep. And we're going to have player.draw. Okay, so now 30 times per second, the player will be moving with the player.step function that we're actually not going to do anything with in this video. That'll be in the next video. And then we're going to draw everything, and that will involve clearing the canvas and then drawing the player. So again, the step function, this is where we're actually going to move the player based on like key presses, but we'll do that in the next video. But in this video, we are going to draw it. So we're going to say ctx. And again, remember, this is an extension of the index.js file where we established ctx up here. So we don't need to send ctx uh, within this method or anything like that. We can just, let me save this. We can just say ctx.fill style is equal to green. So we're making that brush color green for the player. 
Um, of course, this could change in the future, but that's just what we're going to do for right now. And then ctx fill rect. And we're going to say this.x. It's important that you say this. You can't just say x. It has to be this.x. I believe if you said x, it might refer to this up here. So we're going to say this.x because this.x will be changing in the future. This.y. This.width. And this dot height. There we are. So now, when our every time our step event runs, every time our set interval runs, I guess our game loop runs, it's gonna call the step event. And then player dot step won't do anything yet, but that'll be updated in the next video. Then it's gonna call the draw function. Here is the draw function right here. And after it clears the canvas, it'll draw the player right down there. And drawing player will set the color to green and it'll fill the rectangle in. So if everything is saved, let's go back here. And there we are. There is our player. And really quick, I'll give you guys a quick sneak peek of what this is going to look like. We can say this.x plus plus. I'm going to get rid of this. So if you're copying the tutorial, don't worry about copying this down. This is just for demonstration purposes. And we can see our player is moving now because its x position is moving. And this is why we need to clear the canvas. I'll show you guys now. If we get rid of, oops, if we comment those out and we refresh, see how the player is just being stretched? That's because uh, it's drawing on top of the previous one that was already there, but it's never being cleared. And then this is also the background color because the canvas is transparent. So that's why we need to clear the canvas each time before we draw anything new. But now you can see our player is moving. So there's some basic player movement, but we'll actually be adding player movement from the, uh, the keyboard, from WASD and from the arrow keys in the next video. But that's actually going to be it for this video. So let me get rid of that really quickly so we don't get off track. Okay, everything is saved and it looks good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, drop a like down below. Comment what you want to see with the series again. Uh, once we get going, I'm going to be reading the comments. And once we have like a basic framework set up, I'll be reading the comments and implementing features that you guys want to see. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below and subscribe so you don't miss the, the next episode and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.